Hey guys, God bless you all. I hope you are all having an awesome day. Um, so, like I posted yesterday, like I said yesterday in my video, um, I have a really awesome, encouraging word that I would like to share with you guys. Today we're going to be talking about something that I personally have had to work really hard at and am still currently working really hard at. Um, I have definitely not mastered this yet, not even close. Um, but we're going to be talking about hiding God's word in our heart or storing God's word in our heart. Okay, we're going to be talking about, you know, what that means, Bible verses um, about it. And then at the end, I'm going to give you some practical ways that you can do that. Or if you're already doing that, improve and doing it um, because we can all improve, you know. So before I jump in, I just want to pray for us real quick. Oh, Father God, you are holy, Lord. You are truly, truly holy and i know that we as christians say use that phrase a lot the lord is holy but if we just stop and think about how holy you really are in all your beauty all your glory and all your splendor lord our minds can't even comprehend like my mind cannot even make sense of your holiness lord you are worthy to be praised you are worthy of our time, Lord, our adoration. Lord, today as I, as I give this word, I just pray, Lord, that Holy Spirit, that you would be present, that you would be present in this teaching. I pray that you would help me only speak things that bring you glory and honor. Only allow me to speak things that are truth, your truth, which is the only truth. Lord God, I pray that you will stir in our hearts a fresh desire to want to read your word, but not just read it, to feed off of it, to feast on your word. We love you, Lord, and you alone are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so like I said, we're going to be talking about hiding God's word in our hearts. Um, so I said this yesterday, but I'm going to say it again in case someone didn't watch my video yesterday. If the word of God is hidden in your hearts, truly hidden in your hearts, then we will begin to see it manifest in our lives. Does that make sense? We will begin to see the results of it in our lives. We will begin to walk the walk so to speak. Um, so the Bible tells us to store or to hide God's word in our hearts. Um, it talks about this in many places. So I just want to give us uh, a few different verses here. We're going to start with Deuteronomy 6 verses 6 through 9, which says, oh, I feel like I'm really close to this camera. Hold on. Okay. So it says, Write these commandments, this is the Lord speaking, write these commandments that I've given you today on your hearts. Get them inside of you and then get them inside of your children. Talk about them wherever you go, sitting at home or walking on the street. Talk about them from the time you get up in the morning to when you fall into bed at night. Tie them on your hands and foreheads as a reminder. Inscribe them on the doorpost of your home and on your city gates. So like, Wow, as we can tell, the Lord is very serious about what he's saying here. He wants us to be feeding on his, on his word, on his word. Um, so the next verse is Deuteronomy eleven eighteen. The Lord speaking here again. Um, Imprint these words of mine on your hearts and minds and bind them as a sign on your hands and let them be a symbol on your forehead. And then if we look at Psalm 119.11, this is David speaking, and he says, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. So why, why did he do it? So that he might not sin against the Lord. Because when we are filled up with the Lord's word and his truth, then we know what things please him and do not please him. And we will see that our desires begin to, to turn into his desires. 
you know, the Bible says he will give us the desires, the desires of our hearts. And that's true. But I found that my desires have changed. They have conformed to more Christ-like desires. All right, I've just got two more verses for this section. Um, Psalm 37, 31 says, the law, of, the law of his God is in his heart, and his steps do not falter. And then Psalm 48 says, I delight to do your will, O oh my God, and your law is within my heart. So those, that, those were just a few examples of where in the Bible. Um, it talks about having God's law in your heart. Uh, so we are told also in scripture, we are told to meditate on his word day and night, day and night. So consistently all the time. But I bet if some of us were to take an honest look at our lives, we wouldn't be able to say that we do that consistently. Um, you know, it's all about consistent, consistency. So why, like, why should we store God's word in our heart? Why should, why should we bother reading the Bible? Why should we bother doing all of these things? Um, for many reasons, one of them being so we can apply God's word to our life situations, circumstances. Um, so we can use God's word to overcome temptations and the enemy, the devil. Psalm 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So the Bible is living. It's active. It's a weapon against the, the flesh. It's a weapon against the enemy. Um, so let's talk about Jesus in the wilderness for a minute. Um, you know, he had fasted for 40 days. Thank you, Jesus. He had fasted for 40 days. And then who comes along? The devil does. He comes along to tempt him. Um, so each time he, each time the devil tempts Jesus, what does Jesus respond with? What does he fight back with? The word. He uses the word. So the word of God is our sword. It's our sword of the spirit. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, Ephesians 6 talks about our spiritual armor. It's this invisible armor, but very real armor, just invisible to our, um, to our physical, to our human eyes. Um, it talks about our spiritual armor though, and the, the word of God is the sword of the spirit and it's what we Christians should be fighting with. We should be fighting with the word and with prayer because in all situations, guys, Jesus is the answer in every situation. But if we aren't in the word daily, then how could we possibly use it or apply it to our lives? You know, we have to know it to apply it. And we should be feeding on God's word daily, every single day. And I, I'm not saying this is some like meaningless religious task or anything. We should be in his word so we can be learning more about him and about his character and what his will is and what he desires for us and what he commands of us and many, many other reasons. Um, so if we aren't wielding our sword, and remember the Bible is the sword of the spirit. So if we aren't wielding our sword, then how can we use it in times of battle or times of testing? So I want to give you all some examples of what I mean when I say applying scripture to certain situations or circumstances in your life. So let's say a person is being tempted with sin. Well, that person could speak, and when I say speak, I mean out loud, um, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, which says, no temptation, has over, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man. But God is faithful, and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, he will also make a way of escape so that you may be able to bear it. And let's say that maybe you don't struggle with temptations. Maybe you're someone who struggles more with anger. Well, there are several verses for that. Um, one of them is James 1.19, which says, in me and my family, especially one of my sons right now, this is a verse that we repeat, that we, rec we recite, we say a lot in our family. James 1.19, be quick to listen, 
slow to speak and slow to become angry. And another good one is Ephesians 4.26, which says, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Because, guys, if we're being real, the enemy or anger gives the enemy an open door to our life. That's an open door, and so is bitterness, so is uh, envy, so is pride, and many, many other things. Um, so let's say you don't really struggle with anger either, but maybe you're someone like me and you hear those lies in your head all the time about your identity, um, lies about yourself. You know, you're unworthy. You're not good enough. God can't use you. Um, you're not wanted. Um, you're unworthy. You're ugly. You know, whatever the lie may be, it's different for everyone. You're stupid. Um, they don't like you. Nobody likes you. You know what kind of lies I'm talking about. There are so many verses in scripture to fight against this that talk about our identity in Christ and what God says about us. But I'm going to give you some of them. Um, first one is John 1.12 and it says, But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. We are God's child. We are his child, child of the Most High King. It doesn't get any better than that. First Peter 2, 9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of, listen to this part, you may, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. And another verse is 1 John 3, 1 through 2, which says, I love this verse. See, or these verses, see what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And like I said, that is just a couple of the verses. Um, there are so many more. Um, so when those lying voices pop up in your head, because they, they're, they're bound to come from time to time, when they pop up in your head, you stop. First say Jesus, but then you say, you know, no, that's not what God says about me. That's not what God's word says about me. God says I'm loved. He says I'm chosen. He says I'm set apart. He says I am whatever, whatever, whatever the lie is, you combat it with the truth from God's word. All right, so um, let's say that you're worried about money. About finances. Well, Philippians 4.19, this is the New Living Translation. It says, the same God who takes care of me will supply all of your needs from his glorious riches, which has been given to us in Christ Jesus. God promises to supply our every need. Let's say that you are tempted with like the fear of failure. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not even going to try because I know I'm going to fail. I've been guilty of being that person sometimes. Well, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It doesn't say I can do some things. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But only if I believe that, only if I truly believe that that is just more than a Bible verse, that that's just more than words written on a paper, I have to believe that that is true for me too. Uh, and I've just got one more. So let's say you're you're dealing with anxiety. And I know a lot of us nowadays deal with anxiety. Um, I've got some verses for that. And there are so many. The first one is Philippians 4, 6 through 7. This is also the New Living Translation. It says, don't worry or be anxious um, about anything. But instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then 
you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus, or it could also say as you abide in Christ Jesus. Um, Psalm 94, 19 says, When my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your comfort delights my soul. And I love that verse. Matthew six twenty seven, Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Think about that. Can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? No, we absolutely cannot. And I also suggest if you're someone who struggles with anxiety and you're not very familiar with this passage, or even if you are, go back and read it again. I really suggest you read Matthew um, 6, 25 through 34. It's just an expansion of the verse I just read. It's the whole deal of Jesus speaking. Um, and I've got just one more verse. It is 2 Timothy 1, 7, which says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and of timidity, but one of power, love, and self-discipline. Other translations say a sound mind or self-control. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so hiding God's word in our hearts allows us to remember God's perfect word in the times when the enemy seeks to steal the truth from us or those times when he seeks to steal our peace and our joy, our God-given peace and joy. We don't have to lay down and let him win. We don't. And we don't have to let the, the war raging in our mind we don't have to submit to that either. We don't, because the Bible says who the sun sets free is free indeed. Do you believe you're free? So like I said, we don't have to lay down and let him win, but we must be suited up with our spiritual armor each and every day. And we must know and keep learning the word of God. And we must have an active, personal prayer life. Okay, that is so important. Because you can have all the book knowledge in the world. You can know the Bible from front to cover and be just like the Pharisees from Scripture. But if you don't have that personal prayer life, that personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, where you get in that throne room, you enter into the Holy of Holies. Y'all, Jesus didn't tear that veil for nothing. You know what I'm saying? You have access to God. Direct access. They didn't have that in the Old Testament. Only the high priest, and it was crazy back then. Like, they would have to tie a rope around your ankle, and, um, you know, just in case you died so they could pull you out. Because no one else could enter God's presence. He was that holy. And now, like, I'm sitting in my prayer closet right now. I can pray I can pray to God here. I can pray to God in the car. I can pray to God when I'm washing dishes. I'm not going to get arrested if I'm in Walmart praying to God. Um, but sorry, I'm getting off topic here. So where was that at? Okay, so um, so how do we store his word in our hearts? I just have six practical steps, and this will just take a minute. I'm almost done. I have six practical steps um, that I really believe will help you because they have helped me personally. This is from my own personal experience. Um, and like I said, I'm still working on this. I'm far from perfect. Uh, number one is be intentional. Be intentional. Uh, set aside a time each day to read his word. And go slow and really think about what you are reading. Like dissect his word. Each word. Um, and pick a time and stick with that time. Like for me, early in the morning is really good. Um, I like to get up before anyone else is up and just get my mind focused on the Lord. Now some mornings, I don't always do that. And I wake up a little later. Um, and then I have to sit down and really get in the Lord's presence after I've dropped everyone off at work and school. Um, but anyways, maybe the night time's better for you, but that's between you and God. Oh, and also, I want to say it takes 30 days to form a habit. So try to be intentional for 30 days if you're struggling with reading your Bible and see if after 30 days it's not easier for you because I'm not going to start rambling. Okay, number two, pick a verse or two and memorize it. You could use little um, sticky notes or index cards or you could get a dry erase marker and write it on your bathroom mirror or whatever you want to do but memorize verses number three read out loud read the bible out loud 
And I know this is not always possible, um, but when it is, you should try it. There's just, there's power with, with reading the word out loud. I just think it's really awesome. And read it out loud to your children or to your spouse or to your friends or to your dog or your cat, whatever. Uh, number four, this one was a game changer for me. Practice praying the word. What I mean by that is during prayer time, incorporate the word of God. Incorporate the Bible into your prayers to God. So, for example, you could say, Father God, your word says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So, Lord, help me, Lord, to submit to you in all I do and to resist the devil in every area of my life so he will flee from me. Does that make sense? All right, and then just two more. Number five, pray before you read the Bible and ask God to speak to you um, through his word. Ask him to speak through his word. Ask him to give you supernatural understanding of his word. I say that sometimes. Uh, guys, he loves to speak to all who will believe. Just believe he wants to speak to you. It is his joy to speak to you. He loves to speak to all who will open their ears and listen. And then number six, keep Jesus your focus. If Jesus is not your focus, you're doing it wrong. If reading two chapters a day or reading for 30 minutes a day, if that is your main focus, then you're focusing on the wrong thing. Keep Jesus as your focus. Don't worry so much about how much you read. It's about how much are you absorbing, you know? Um, don't make it a religious, meaningless checklist. The goal is to get into his presence. And God speaks in many ways. But one of the ways he speaks is through his word. So um, also another thing I just thought of is try to get in a quiet environment. If you live in a house like mine where you have a lot of kids, that's not always easy. Um, but just if you can, you know, get that quiet time with God. If you have to go lock yourself in the bathroom or whatever, make yourself a war room. It's a prayer closet. It's what I have. Um, this, I just come in here. It's just a little closet. And uh, I just come in here and I just pray. I come in here and I worship. I come in here and cry, read the Bible, whatever. I even find my kids coming in here sometimes throughout the day. It's so beautiful. Um, it's like the family altar, so to speak. Uh, and one more thing I just thought of too is uh, there's also plenty of Bible apps you can get it to read to you, you know, while you're working or driving or washing dishes, whatever. My husband does that a lot. He's a construction worker, so he'll just have the Bible reading in his ear, he says. But anyways, um, that's all I've got for you guys. I pray this message has blessed you. Uh, please like my video if it has encouraged you or blessed you in any way. And please share it with someone else. Let's get the word of God out there in whatever way we can. I love you all, and I'll see you next time. Be blessed.